<laughs> this is the blackest paint in the world. And these are the Kizo Prisms, probably one of the shiniest shoes in the world. And if you don't know where this is going by now, I don't know what to tell you. So this is Musso Black. It's the darkest paint in the world, and it absorbs 99.4% of all light. Which basically means when you put it on something, it takes away all the depth in it. There are no shadows. There are no highlights. It doesn't even look like a 3D object anymore. It's hard to tell what it is. It's trippy to look at. And not to mention, the bottle is $30, and I used all of it on the shoe and this box. But I think it was pretty well worth it. This looks like a magic trick. It's like there's a black hole and then all of a sudden there's a shoe there or something that looks like a shoe. It's just really a shape. It's weird to look at. And now usually I'd say let me know what you think about the shoe but you can't see the shoe. So let me know what you think about the paint. It's like you could read my mind. Or maybe I'm just getting way too predictable. But either way I'm doing exactly what you thought I was gonna do. So I put the world's blackest paint on a pair of Prism Kizos and now I'm just gonna scratch the paint off and let the shiny patent leather show through. It's a very simple idea and it looks pretty easy. I thought it was going to be very easy, but it was harder than I thought it was going to be. These stars are not easy to do across multiple panels, especially when the paint is so thick. I decided to go with stars because I was already very limited in what I could do, and also, like I said, this was actually kind of difficult, so I needed something nice and simple. And I was also thinking, once you put these back in the black box, all you'll be able to see is the stars, and it would kind of look like the night sky. And I was right, so let me know what you think about these. This is the only time that I've destroyed a sneaker for a good reason. Now, it's no secret that I like to destroy shoes, but usually it's for no reason, and they end up in the trash. But while I was looking at the Kizo prisms, I got a really good idea to turn them into this like sculpture art piece. I don't even know what to call it, but I liked the idea. They reminded me of a CD, so I wanted to turn them into that, but I also thought it would be cooler to make it the size of a vinyl record, so I did that. I took all the little individual pieces from the shoes and I glued them to the template that I made from a vinyl record. It took me forever to break down the shoes. I don't know why, but it was a lot harder than I thought. And lastly, I put the words big CD on the front in quotations because it looks like a CD, but it's the size of a vinyl record. Record. It's a little ironic. It kind of gives it an off-white spin. And this is our beautiful final result. For about one week out of every month, our house turns into a factory. And before you freak out, don't worry, these were all defects. But this is what it takes to be a small business. We have to pack up all these orders every month, and we do it all out of our living room. But you already know how this story goes. We check every shoe for defects, we pack them up all nice and get them ready for the drop. Which is tomorrow, March 25th at 7 p.m., by the way. But I really want to give my two cents on this whole potential TikTok ban. First and foremost, without TikTok, I'd probably have nothing. I wouldn't have become a content creator, Kizzo wouldn't exist, I would still live in Boston, and I wouldn't have met so many many amazing people and done so many amazing things. And I know that's the same story for so many people. This app has jump-started a million and one careers. This is a place for creative expression, free thought, and information. And to see our own government trying to take that from us and claim that it's for data safety is just so frustrating. We all know that's not what this is about and we're all upset. I could talk about this for hours, but my time's up here. Let me know who's copying these tomorrow and also let's hope TikTok clutches up. There's a code hidden in this video that will give five people 100% off. All you gotta do is find all the pieces of paper, add them up, and there's your code the drop is live right now so the first five people to find it are gonna get free shoes and no i don't usually do unboxings because i think they're boring but these shoes and the packaging and all the details are just too nice these are the kizzo prisms if you couldn't figure that out already and they're called prisms because well they look like a prism but the worst part about this shoe is that everybody asks the same question oh what could i wear with those they're too hard to match with shoes like this are not meant to go with every one of your outfits or that brand new gucci t-shirt you just bought these shoes are the outfit and they're gonna catch everybody's eyes that sees them so getting all black fit and let the Kizos do the talking. But like I said, these are live right now and they're gonna sell out fast. So who found that code? I'm a horrible friend. And this is also why I never do commissions for anybody. So many months ago, one of my good friends, Cole, gave me this painting that he made as a housewarming gift. And it was part of a trade that we made. So he would send me the painting and I would make him custom shoes. I was very excited, obviously, because I've wanted one of his paintings for a long time. But then I remembered why I don't do commissions anymore. I worry way too much about other people's expectations. It's just way easier to make something that I wanna make and that I like. And Cole's the nicest guy ever. He's also an artist, so I'm sure he's gonna appreciate them no matter what. But I just don't wanna let anybody down. I don't want them to get something that they don't love. And Cole made it even harder because he gave me free creative direction, which means I can do whatever I want, but I don't know what he wants. So long story short, that's why I don't do commissions anymore. It's also why in my videos now, I just have fun with the shoes and I don't care how they turn out because they're mine anyway. So Cole, I'm sorry, but that's why it took me six months to make these. They were a complete freestyle, but I think Cole's gonna love them. Let me know what you think.
Now, I want to sit here and pretend that I saw this coming, but it still amazes even me. These are the Kizzo Prisms, and they released on Saturday. It was our biggest release to date, and it also sold out faster than every other one we've done. But anyway, you guys saw last week that we had to organize these, put them all in the shoe boxes, and now it's time to put them in their shipping boxes and send them out to all the customers. So Zuki and I always like to start by pre-making all the shipping boxes. It just makes everything go way faster. Once they're all pre-made, we have to get the shoe boxes into the shipping boxes. I was the one in the room with the shoes, so that means I have to get an order slip, I have to find the matching size, and then I slide it through the window to Greco and Zuki. This was the second day of packing. It actually took two days this time, and Greco saved our lives. Nobody else was around to come help, so Greco came through, and the three of us banged out 60% of these orders in like two hours. We were like a well-oiled machine. After that, all that's left is to pack up the UPS truck and send them on their way. Our guy Brian always comes through and picks up all our orders for us, and like usual, we gave him a free pair, but that's it for this drop. Get ready for next month. My girlfriend got a bleach stain on her favorite sweatpants. She thought they were ruined, and was going to throw them away, but I wanted to put all of this dying experience I had to the test and see if I could save them. The first step is to remove all the color from the garment. I think that might be the first time I said that word, but it doesn't matter what you use. It could be a color remover or bleach. It just has to remove all the dye from the garment and make it one light, even color. The second step is very obviously to then dye your garment. Let it sit in there for about 10 to 20 minutes and fill up another pot with a color stay fixative. And then finally, move your garment from the dye pot to the fixative pot. This just helps to really lock the dye in place and make sure it doesn't fade or leak too much. And this is our final product. I saved the sweatpants. There's no more bleach stains and they're also a much darker color now. I'm just glad it all worked out because if I messed up, I would have been in big trouble. So let me know how I did and I also hope this video saved someone else's clothes from being thrown away. Customizing shoes with bubbles is not something I thought I'd be doing. I first saw this a while ago from my friends over at Hex the Moon Customs, and as soon as I saw it, I wanted to try it. But for whatever reason, it just slipped my mind, and I completely forgot that it existed until the other day when I was trying to think of an idea for a video, and I was like, oh, what about that bubble idea? So here I am making bubble dye. I also didn't have a straw, so I had to make one out of a pen. Who doesn't have a straw in their house? Me, I don't. So I had to use a pen, but it worked just as well, so it's it's okay. So I started with the blue, and as you saw, it came out pretty good. It looked just like bubbles but then i moved on to the red and the green and the yellow and i lost more and more hope with every color it just came out really messy and blotchy i don't know how my friends did it because theirs were way better the blue came out okay and this one spot of red but everything else was just trash so let me know what you think about these i don't even know how i messed these up considering i'm the one that made the technique a while back i made a pair of shoes for andre drummond that had this squiggly line filled with all these colors going around the shoe and to this day it's one of my favorite designs so i had this copy pair of kizzos laying around which if you want wanted a pair. Too bad they're sold out. You missed it. But anyway, I wanted to recreate that design on my pair because I loved it that much. It's a pretty simple process. You take a bunch of colors, draw a bunch of lines all around the shoe, and then they fade together very nicely. However, I added too many lines and didn't leave enough space in between each of them, so the colors kind of bled together, and it was just this ugly smudge of colors, and I just ended up painting over it with black. And if you know me, you know that I'm very impatient. I was already two hours into this. I wasn't liking it, and I kind of just gave up. So the line's kind of inconsistent. It's a little bit messy, but it doesn't matter because it's my pair, and I really don't Okay. Let me know what you think about these and follow Kizzo Kicks for the next release. Apparently, you can create your own dye with things like fruits and vegetables. And while trying this experiment, this little guy reminded me why you always wash your produce. The first thing I'm going to try to create dye out of is this red beet. It produces a reddish pink kind of color, and I was really excited about it, judging by the color that was on the cutting board and my hand. So I blended it all up. I thought that would give me the best results. I poured it into a pot with water, and I boiled it, but I made a mistake. I may have sort of kind of left the pot on the stove and forgot about it and burned all the beets inside it so now it's yellow instead of pink but it actually worked you can create dyes out of all types of crazy things and i'm excited to try more of these but let me know what you think 90% of my videos are shoes, and the other 10% are dumb things like this. But I was excited because, one, this is my biggest project yet, and two, it's something other than shoes. Those shoes you see in the background are called the dartboards, and they drop this Saturday. Now, that should give you plenty of information on what we're making, but if you haven't figured it out yet, spoiler alert, it's a dartboard. And a pretty big one at that. It was also really fun to make because, well, it's just circles and triangles. How hard could that be? And once we had all those circles and triangles taped up, we spray painted the whole board. And yes, we know we could have taped outside of that line to get a really clean circle but we wanted that overspray look because we thought it would look cool and it does look cool so we were right the only part i hand painted was the bullseye because well it was just too small it wouldn't be worth the time to tape it up and then we added a nice kizzo logo at the top again with that overspray look and just like that the dartboard is done i think it looks sick but just try to take a guess on why we built it and what the next video is gonna be